What's up, math fans? You're looking at factoring by grouping on Professor Noy's YouTube channel. Thanks for visiting. Um, this is an Algebra 2 topic, but you have to be familiar with Algebra 1 topics. So here are three popular factoring topics. GCF, which means greatest common factor. That's very important. In order to understand greatest common factor, you have to be pretty good at division. Factoring is basically a fancy word for division, dividing, breaking down, they call it, or breaking it apart. Um, if you're not that good at division, just get a calculator and follow along. Um, dots means difference of two squares. That's a way of factoring what's called quadratics. Also, uh, sum product is a way of factoring what's called quadratics. Those are two methods that I use for factoring quadratics. So you should be good at that, but for this particular lesson, you have to be strong with GCF, greatest common factor. Why? Because a quadratic is a, a variable squared, the highest power is squared. So without that first term, you're looking at a quadratic. However, this is not a quadratic, it's actually four terms, the highest term, the highest power is three, so this is called a cubic, which is even more complicated, but don't get overwhelmed, that's the whole point of this video, is not to get overwhelmed. Um, so I'm looking at four terms, and I want to group my terms, that's gonna make it easier and less overwhelming, to be able to just focus in. So, what's a GCF, greatest common factor? Is there something in common with all four of these terms? Let's look. Is there anything that goes into 25, 5, 30, and 6? No. Is there a variable that goes into V3, V squared, V to the 1, and hey, there's no V here. So then no, okay? In fact, just to point something out, they already gave it to you in descending order. When I say descending order, I mean the highest power was 3, then 2, then there's that hidden 1, and this is actually v to the 0 power. We don't write v to the 0 power because anything to the 0 power is 1, and 1 times 6 leaves you with 6, so there's no need to write the v to the 0. But that's already in descending order, so you're already ready to group, okay? Otherwise, you would have to rearrange terms first so that they are in descending order. All right, so there's no GCF. I'm going to group. I'm going to look at just the first two terms, ignore those terms. It's very easy. It's a binomial. Just focus on the binomial. Is there anything? Is there anything in common? Is there any factor in common? Is there anything that goes into 25 and 5? Absolutely 5. Not only 5, but look at the variables. V to the third, you understand that means V times V times V. V squared means V times V. What's in common? A couple of V's here, a couple of V's here. People hear greatest common factor and they think, oh, let me take the biggest exponent. It's actually the smaller of the two exponents because you can only take out v squared from both. You can't take out v to the third from both because there's no v to the third here. So this is v squared, okay? Your job is to figure out, once I factored it out, once I divided it out, what's left? Well, if I divide by 5v squared, I'm left, this is left with just plain 5v. If I divide this by 5v squared, it's gone, it's only you're left with nothing, but you don't write nothing, you don't write zero, you have to write one. Well, if you don't believe me, use the distributive property to check your work. 5v squared times 5v gives you the 25v to the third. 5v squared times one gives you back the 5v squared. You need that, you need that one. Let's move on. You can ignore that binomial and now just check out this simple binomial. Is there a GCF here in these two terms? Yep, plus uh, six, that was easy. No variable this time. What's left? 5v plus. And again, if you factor out a 6, you need something here. That's a 1. Close it. I factored. I grouped. I factored. Basically, factoring by grouping turns one question into two separate questions, and you're done. So it's more work, but it's not, more, it's not overwhelming. You can do this. Here is the, the trick is a lot of people some, uh, call this, instead of factoring by grouping, they just say factor completely. That's a clue to tell you have more than one step. That was the first step. There is another step, and if you look carefully, you should see something in common. Again, greatest common factor. This time, the common factor is an entire binomial. There's a 5v plus 1 in both terms, so that 5v plus 1 gets factored out in front. Now that I factored out a 5v plus 1, this entire 5v plus 1 goes in front, I'm left with the blue, the 5v squared. And this 5v plus 1 got factored out and put in front, so I'm left with the blue here, plus 6, and now you are done. You have factored completely. This is a squared, by the way. And 
If it was more complicated, you could point that out and say, hey, look, this is a quadratic. Now I can use dots or anti or, or uh, some product. But in this particular case, you can't. It can't be factored any further. You can check, but it, here it can't. Or you can say, hey, hey, is there a GCF here? There's not, so you're done. If there was a GCF, you'd have to go further. But we're good. All right. I would try the next one on my own, so maybe you pause it. Okay. Now you can compare with what I'm about to do. <clears throat> Step one, look for a GCF in all four terms. This time, there is one. It's three. If you're not sure, uh, you should know 21 is divisible by three. 15 and 60 are all divisible by three. The only one that might trip, trip you up is 84. But here's a trick. Add eight plus four. Add the digits. Okay? When you add the digits, you get 12. If 12 is divisible by three, the whole thing is divisible by three. So now you just use a calculator to figure out what the answer is. Um, I'll give so my three is gonna go outside and I gotta figure out what's left. So we'll just divide everything by three. So 7k to the third minus uh, three goes into eight twice with a remainder of two, which makes this a 24. Three goes into 24 eight times. That's 28k squared plus uh, what's left here? 15 divided by three is 5k minus, and that's a 20. Now that the GCF is out of the way, um, I'll use brackets, we can factor by grouping. So I'm going to look at just the first two terms. Is there a number that goes into 7 and 28? Yes, that number is 7. Also, k squared. k squared is in both terms. What's left? Uh, let's see here. There's a k, just a k, minus... 4, because 7 times 4 is 28, and the k squared got factored out, so I'm done there. Plus, now I'm looking at only these two terms. Is there a GCF there? Yes, there is. It's 5. Plus, uh, what's left? Just k minus 4. And then I'll close my brackets. Notice 5k, 5 times 4 is 20, so I factored correctly. Now, lucky for us, this is common in both. That's the, that's the point of this thing. So I'm going to factor out this k minus 4, put it in front, and then whatever's left over goes in the next binomial. So this 7k squared and plus 5. Okay. Once this k minus 4 gets taken out, you just put what's not taken out together in the binomial. All right, don't forget to drop down the three, and you are done. You wanna double check, ask yourself, can I go further? Is there a GCF here? Can I use dots or, or some product here, which you can't, so you're done. Thanks for watching, see ya.